So let's talk about blockchain and mining in Ethereum. The Ethereum blockchain is in many ways similar to the Bitcoin blockchain, although it does have some differences. The main difference between Ethereum and Bitcoin with regard to the blockchain architecture is that, unlike Bitcoin, which only contains a copy of the transaction list, Ethereum blocks contain a copy of both the transaction list and the most recent state. Oh, okay. That must be big. Aside from that, two, uh, two other values, the block number and the difficulty, are also stored in a block. Okay, so block number was, um, was inferred by the previous block, I mean, plus one. So in Bitcoin it was uh, it was not stored. Yes, the difficulty is not was not stored directly, but you had uh, bits which uh, serves to calculate the difficulty. Uh, the basic block validation algorithm in Ethereum is as follows. So the part that is a bit surprising here is they say that Ethereum blocks contain a copy of the transaction list, which is okay but also the most recent state. So I thought the recent state was really large and I don't see how you can include that every block. Okay, so check if the block, if the previous block reference exists and is valid, that's the same as Bitcoin. Check that the timestamp of the block is greater than, than that of the reference previous block and less than 15 minutes into the future. So Bitcoin is two hours, then to 15 minutes. Check that the block number difficulty transaction root Uncle root and gas limit. Uh, various low-level Ethereum specific concepts are valid, so we don't know what is this. Okay, so transaction root is probably the same as uh, Bitcoin. It has uh, the market root, but uncle root, we don't know what it is. And gas limit, gas limit. Well, it has to be uh, referring to the transaction gas limit, but I don't know what it is in the block. Check that the proof of work on the block is valid, so it's the same. Let S0 be the state at the end of the previous block. Let TX be the block transaction list with N transactions for the other. Uh, uh, let's set S I plus 1 equal apply, so it's the same. We apply the, the, tra the transaction on the, on, the, on the state, starting with a previous state, a previous block and state. If any application application returns an error, or if the total gas consumed in a block up until this point exceeds the gas limit, return an error. Oh, so this is the total gas limit for all the gas transaction uh, all the transactions in the block. So you we had a gas limit per per transaction as uh, indicated by um, whoever issues the uh, the message, but there's also uh, overall gas limit per block. Uh, let S final be SN, uh, but adding the block reward paid to the miner. Okay, so the the miner gets a block reward and it's not part of the transaction. In in Bitcoin, the first transaction was the uh, the block reward. Uh, check if the Merkle tree root of the state S final is equal to the final state root provided in the block header. If it is, the block is valid, otherwise it's not. Uh, okay, so now to explain why the entire state with each block is... Com is uh, the approach may seem highly inefficient at first glance, because it needs to store the entire state with each block, but in reality, efficiency should be comparable to that of Bitcoin. The reason is that the state is stored in a tree structure, and after each and after every block, only a small part of the tree needs to be changed. Thus, in general, between two adjacent blocks, the vast majority of the tree should be the same, and therefore the data can be stored once and referenced reference twice using pointers, hashes of subtrees. A special kind of tree, known as a Patricia tree, is used to accomplish this including a modification to the Merkle tree concept that allows for nodes to be inserted and deleted and not just change efficiently. 
additionally, because all of the state information is part of the last block, there is no need to store the entire blockchain history. A strategy which, if it could be applied to Bitcoin, can be calculated to provide 5 to 20x savings in space. So I think they are not exact. Okay, so what they are saying here right, is that the, uh, the, the block contains the uh, entire state. So for Bitcoin, it would be each block containing the entire UTXO state. Uh, of course, uh, Ethereum is not using UTXOs, but they are talking about the state of uh, their accounts. So what was mentioned earlier, meaning this, this stuff here, uh, specifically the long-term storage per, uh, per account. And that seems to be large, but then, uh, but then they say that it's not as large because only a small change was uh, was made per block. So when they say it stored entire uh, state per block, I not I'm saying it's a bit misleading. I mean, for me, it's a bit misleading because they actually only store the the difference uh, between the the current state. And the previous state. Um, this is similar to uh, to a persistent tree. So in uh, functional languages where data structures can cannot be changed, um, you have uh, persistent uh, collections, such as persistent uh, hash maps, persistent arrays, and so on, and so on and so forth. In this case, persistent doesn't mean that it's stored on disk, but persistent means that uh, this this tree is um, only a few nodes are are changed when you get the new uh, the, the new tree. So, for example, if you have uh, you have an array that uh, has like three elements, and you change the, the the middle element, so one two three, you change to one four three. Uh, in a normal array, uh, you would not have access to the, to the to the previous uh, version of that array, so you essentially change in place the, uh, the the values of the array. So you have one four three, and no longer access to one two three. In functional languages where uh, data structures cannot be uh, changed, you is, you basically have to create a new array. Right? So you have one two three, and then when you mutate that array to one four three. You have one four three, but you still have somewhere uh, one two three. So if you had a reference uh, to the previous array, you will still see that array as one two three. The the new array would would be one four three. Um, if you implement the uh, the trivial uh, way to do this, you would copy one two three to another array, and then you would change the middle element to one to four. But that's obviously a, a large waste of resources, space, and, and, uh, and uh, compute because uh, lots of these of these values are still the same. So there are uh, more efficient data structures uh, which still preserve the appearance that you have uh, an array, but they uh, uh, use uh, pointers to uh, re refer to the previous values. So uh, even though you will look like um, you have both one two three and one four three. The the values ones that are as the same between uh, between arrays will will not be stored as as values but as references, and you can do the same with uh, with trees. So what what they say is that uh, you store the the state as a as this fancy as this persistent uh, persistent uh, tree. And when you apply the uh, the transactions, you will create an, another tree, uh, which shares uh, many nodes in common with the with the previous tree. So even though logically the tree is in part of each block, uh, it's not serialized entirely per block. Uh, so I think you should you still need if you just get one block, and you see that this block has a lot of reference to data that is not part of the block. You still need to find a way to retrieve the, the data uh, that was unchanged uh, from the previous block. But I think what is interesting though is that there is a, a standard way to represent the state. Uh, so there's a normalized representation of the state. Since they can do a, uh, uh, the, they can use the Merkle tree approach, 
to get the official Merkle root, uh, which is then stored inside the block. So contrary to, to Bitcoin, which didn't have this uh, canonical uh, representation, do you have in, in uh, Ethereum you have a way to query uh, uh, query uh, other nodes uh, which have this data and verify that the data is correct. You can essentially download the, the state, the previous state from a, another node, and we construct this uh, Patricia, Patricia tree, uh, which represents the, 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 the state, and verify that uh, by hashing the entire content, uh, hashing, uh, rebuilding the Merkle tree, uh, you can verify that the, the root hash uh, matches the one that is uh, part of the block uh, header, and see that, that whoever sends you that state uh, did not uh, tamper with it. So Bitcoin, you cannot do that because there is no official uh, UTXO uh, representation. You you will have to calculate it yourself. Um, a commonly asked question is where contract code is executed in terms of physical hardware. This has a simple answer. The process of executing contract code is part of the definition of the state transition function. Uh, which is part of the block validation algorithm. So if a transaction is added into block B, the code execution spawned by that transaction will be executed by all nodes. Now, uh, in the future, then download and validate block B. So yeah, so since uh, the EVM is basically uh, running in each, each node, each node has the same copy of, of the uh, Ethereum, uh, Ethereum client code, which has this uh, EVM uh, execution uh, virtual machine. Whenever the transaction comes, every every node uh, part part of the verification will run the contract code and then derive the, the the new state. So this is this is how we know that there's no tampering, very little chance of tampering because there are so many nodes that execute the same the same uh, same code and uh, the same contract code, uh, and the result should be exactly the same. Uh, but that's also a um, difficulty of the EVM. It, it should not leave anything uh, to chance. Otherwise, there's, if there's a deviation in the, uh, in the result, the this, this state will not be uh, in sync between all these nodes, and obviously the blockchain will not be valid anymore because there's a hash of this state uh, in the block header. Applications. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, we actually. Okay, let's do applications. In general, there are three types of applications on top of Ethereum. The first category is financial applications, providing users with more powerful ways of managing and entering into contracts using their money. This includes subcurrencies, financial derivatives, hedging contracts, saving wallets, wheels, and ultimately, even some classes of full-scale employment contracts. The second category is semi-financial applications, where money is involved, but there's also a heavy non-monetary side to what is being done. A perfect example is self-enforcing bounties for solutions to computational problems. Financially, uh, finally, there are applications such as online voting and decentralized governance that are not financial at all. Okay. Token systems. On blockchain, token systems have many applications ranging from sub-currencies representing assets such as USD or gold to company stocks, individual tokens representing smart property, secure and forgeable coupons, and even token systems with no ties to conventional value at all, used as point systems for incentivization. So he's actually talking about stuff that is going to explore later. ERC twenty, ERC twenty, is is a, a pardon for tokens, that a standard for tokens that uh, could be uh, fall into this category. Uh, token systems are surprisingly easy, easy to implement in Ethereum. The key point to understand is that a currency or, or token system fundamentally is a database with one operation. Subtract x unit from a and give x unit to b with the provision that a has at least x units before the transaction. So this is a this is a transfer. Right? Transaction in Bitcoin is using a it's just a transfer of of units from uh, uh, UTXO a to UTXO b. 
and two, the transaction is approved by A. All that it takes to implement a token system is to implement this logic into a contract. The basic code for implementing a token system in Serpent looks as follow. So you, you define a send, a send function, which checks that you have enough money in the, in the sender account, and then you decrement that account by value, and then you add that value to the dude. So the storage here is an uh, is association table between uh, addresses to, to value. Uh, this is essentially a literal implementation of the banking system state transition function described further above in this document. A few extra lines of code need to be added to provide the initial step of distributing the currency units in the first place and a few other edge cases. And ideally, a function will be added to let other contracts query for the balance of the address. But that's all there is to it. Yeah, this is, this is essentially the uh, ERC20 uh, uh, contract. Uh, theoretically, Ethereum-based token systems acting as a subcurrencies can potentially include other important features that on-chain Bitcoin-based metacurrency lack: like the ability to pay transaction fees dire directly in that currency. The way this would be implemented is that the contract would maintain an Ether balance with which it would refund Ether used to pay fees to the sender and it would refill this balance by collecting the internal currency units that it takes in fees and reselling them in a constant vending auction. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Uh, users would thus need to activate their account with Ether, but once the Ether is there, it would be reusable because the contract would refund it every time. Okay. So, yeah. It's kind of like uh, this, this, uh, this card where, uh, this, this debit card where you, you or let's, let's say this um, traveling card, uh, transportation card, where you, you take the, the subway, <coughs> but you, uh, you, you fill it first and then you, you uh, with some really door value and then you buy some, uh, some trips. Uh, but whenever you, uh, your balance goes to zero, they they will use the uh, the 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 balance in, uh, in cash to buy more trips if you have the ability to go below zero, uh, and then you won't be able to to take the trip anymore until you ref you refill. Uh, so there's this little little deposit uh, amount that allows you to go below zero, but then you have to refill. Uh, financial derivatives and stable value currencies. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here. Oh. But it's at the end. Okay, I think there's a large section about what applications you can do in with this model. So I think it's worth doing that in in the next in a different section. So I'm gonna stop here for now.